Hello everyone, I'm Li Yi Li from UIUC. Today I'm going to present our work on clustering test steps in natural language towards automating test automation in the industry track. This work is done with my collaborators at Tencent Incorporation and Peking University, including Yue Tangden and Tao Xie. WeChat is a representative product of Tencent and is a widely used mobile app with over a billion active users from both China and the rest of the world. To test this large mobile app, our human testers write test cases in natural language. The main body of a test case is a sequence of test steps, as shown in the figure below. The test case also contains some contextual information, such as the identity of the Max tutor and a brief description of the usage. To automate the test execution, we deploy the following workflow. For each test case, we note that it contains a sequence of test steps. The human testers implement each of these test steps with a test API method. The test API method executes the required UI actions specified in the test step using some UI testing package. Then our UI test bed automatically composes a test script that sequentially calls this test API method to automatically run the test case. Note that it's our future work to finish the test bed to support possible complex data flow dependencies. An example of a test step is a sentence that reads user confirms. The corresponding test API method is shown here. The method implementation uses a UI testing package to finish the required UI actions. The main challenge of this workflow is that for a large mobile app like WeChat, we have over 3,000 test steps. Therefore, human testers need to implement over 3,000 test API methods, which is a huge burden. To mitigate this from the manual investigation of the test cases, the key insight we have is that the semantically similar test steps across different test cases can usually be implemented by the same test API method. To significantly reduce the number of test API methods to implement, we thus propose an effective approach and a tool, class step, to cluster similar test steps together. The test steps are now given to class step, and the class step outputs several test step clusters. The human testers now only need to write one test API method for each cluster. Previously, there are over 3,000 test steps, so there are over 3,000 test API methods to implement. Now, we only have 586 test step clusters, so we only need to implement 586 test API methods. It saves a lot of human effort. Now, for our clustering approach and tool, we formally define its input and output. Its inputs are the test cases described solely in natural language. To be concrete, they are in Chinese. For the convenience of the demonstration, I translate them into English. They can be viewed as a set of test steps along with their test case context. The context here means the metadata fields of the test cases, such as main executor, and a test case description as shown in the right figure. Empirically, we found that the only useful information in the context that can decide the cluster results is the main executor field that describes the user identity of the test scenario. Therefore, we only consider the tuples of test that main executor and the inputs. The outputs are the clusters of these test steps. There are three design goals of our clustering approach. First, high clustering accuracy, so that each cluster can be implemented by a single test API method. Second, a small number of clusters, so that the human can write fewer test API methods. Third, editable clustering results. Since we cannot guarantee 100% accuracy, our design must allow the users to fix the wrong clusters easily. Now, let me describe our approach in detail. We first do an analysis of the data set of test cases. 
In the data set, there are over 3,000 test steps. However, there are only around 1,300 test steps that are distinct in terms of the describing synthesis. And all test steps only use around 700 distinct words. It means that the synthesis that describe test steps are highly duplicated and use a limited set of words. Moreover, the grammatic structure is simple. These describing sentences are short, typically having only three to five words. And they are mainly in user plus verb plus object form to describe an explicit user action. Furthermore, mm, the synonyms are frequent, such as confirm and accept, click and choose. Finally, there are many domain specific terms. These characteristics provide both pros and cons. For pros, limited language diversity makes the clustering task easier. For cons, compared with common datasets from natural language processing, our dataset is too small, so that the latest learning techniques will be easily overfitted and have poor performance. To mitigate this, in ClassNap, we use a tailored pipeline for test step clustering. It's based on natural language processing, but tailored for our scenario. As an overview, our pipeline contains six stages. The first stage mm, reads in the test steps. The second stage preprocesses this test step to form an ordered list of words. The third, the third stage performs word embedding training to learn the semantic similarity at the word level. The fourth stage measures the test step distance based on both word semantic similarities and the sentence structure. The fifth stage performs clustering. And the last stage does post refinement to further improve clustering quality and reduce the number of clusters. The first stage, as mentioned, reads in the test steps. And as said, to incorporate the context information from the test case, we attach the main executor field from the test case metadata to the test steps. In the second stage, in preprocessing, we follow common data cleaning steps. First, we split each field into an ordered, of, an ordered list of words. Since the text is in Chinese, we leverage existing tools to split the sentences. Then, we remove the scales words, irregular expressions, and stop words that have no actual meaning, such as to and is. The domain-specific phrases are labeled as single words. After this step, as a running example in the top figure, user chooses to return becomes the word list of user, choose, and return. In the third stage, we perform word embedding training. The word embeddings are high-dimensional numerical vectors that are used to represent the words. Similar words have closed vectors measured by oblivion distance. As shown in the right figure, in the word embedding space, the word study is close to the synonyms studies, study, and learning. Thus, we think word embeddings can capture the semantic similarity between test steps. Since our dataset has a limited number of words, the word embedding training only takes five minutes on a desktop computer. Once word embedding training is done, we can measure the word similarity by Euclidean distance. However, the test step is a sequence of multiple words instead of a single word. How to measure the similarity between test steps? We leverage the relaxed word movers distance that is borrowed from machine learning literature. For the full details about how to adapt the measurement to our test step context, we refer the audience to our paper. Then in the fifth stage, we cluster the test steps according to their pairwise distance. We choose to use the hierarchical agglomerative clustering method. In each iteration, the method 
merges two nearest clusters together until there is only one cluster remaining. Here, the nearness is measured by the average pairwise distance between the two clusters. When treating each cluster as a node, the merging trees form a binary tree because each merging operation generates a parent node for two cluster descendants. Therefore, we support manual adjustment of cluster results by mapping user operations to tree operations. The user can easily split and merge clusters or do individual test step adjustments with our tool. To further improve the customer results, we then use the k-means method to do post-refinement. The k-means is a common clustering approach. In each iteration, k-means assigns each test step to its closest cluster. During each iteration, we consistently remove the empty clusters so that we could reduce the number of clusters. We repeat the process until no test step has their cluster assignment changed. We implement a pipeline into a tool named ClassLab with Web API. Currently, it has been integrated into the testing system of WeChat. Now, we come to the evaluation and discussion. Thanks to our human testers, before the tool was deployed, the human testers had implemented the test API methods for a significant amount of test steps. Therefore, we could use them as a ground truth in this way. We think that two test steps should be in the same cluster if and only if the function calling sequences of the test API methods are equal. Because when the function calling sequences are the same, these test API methods can be merged to a single one easily instead of being implemented multiple times. With the ground truth, we evaluate our main approach class step and class step plus along with some variance and the baseline. Here, the class step is the approach without the k-means post refinement. In other words, it skips the last stage of the pipeline, while class step plus is the approach with the k-means post refinement. The baseline is called ddo. It merges the test steps if and only if the text description are totally equivalent after preprocessing. Note that ddo doesn't consider the test case context. We also implemented several variants of our pipeline, including using recurrent neural networks for test step embedding, distance measurement based on TF-IDF, and some others. We evaluate the clustering accuracy by F-score. The F-score considers each pair of test steps and compares whether they should be in the same cluster in our clustering results and in the ground truth. It's in the range of zero to one. Higher F-score means better clustering accuracy. The detailed definition is shown in the slide. Here it comes to the main result. Except the baseline, for both our approach and the variance, the number of clusters can be dynamically adjusted. So we consider two settings, the strict setting and the loose setting. In the strict setting, we limit the number of clusters to be within 600 so that the human testers can implement fewer test API methods. In the loose setting, we lift this constraint. The table shows the best F-score achieved by each approach for both strict setting and loose setting, where the best is computed across all possible numbers of clusters. In the figure, we plot a curve for each approach. The x-axis is the number of clusters, and the y-axis is the achieved F-score. As we can see, in both strict setting and loose setting, our approach class step and class step plus are much better than the baseline and better than other variants. Moreover, in strict setting, we reduce the number of clusters from over 1,700 to just about 600, while preserving the cluster accuracy as much as over 81% measured by F score. 
compared to the baseline on the number of clusters, we have 65.9% reduction. On cluster quality, we have 79.8% improvement. We also found that class step plus is good on the strict setting and class step is good on the loose setting. To further study their utility, we also estimated the user time savings. The average length of code for each test data method is 9.505. And according to the feedback from the human testers, the estimated implementation time is five minutes. Therefore, previously, we needed about 300 human hours. With the tool, we can reduce the time to just about 50 human hours. Since the size of test cases is still rapidly growing in WeChat, we expect larger and larger time savings. As an attempt to improve the current approach, we inspect the 72 clusters with incorrect test steps instances out of all 586 clusters. For each cluster, we only count the major failing costs and outline the four failing causes as such. A, the most common cost is that the similar test step description may not mean similar implementations or may not mean that they can be implemented by the same test API method. Since the failing costs are few compared to the total, this threat is not so vital. B, the inappropriate handling of main executor build. It's hard to know whether this contextual build matters and whether it, it is not. C, the bad word embeddings. For the relatively scarce words, the learned word embeddings are sometimes imprecise. And D, ignorance of the difference between few important words such as the negation word not. C and D call for a better natural language processing approach to handle. The concrete examples are available in our paper. As a natural question, many people may ask whether our approach can be applied elsewhere beyond WeChat testing. In fact, our approach is general and can be applied to any place where the test steps are written in natural language and when test steps are composed to form test cases. However, since the public data sets are limited, we only evaluate it on WeChat. And it will be our future work to improve and make the tool more general so that it can also be tested on other applications. In summary, in this paper, we introduce the workflow in WeChat testing automation and propose an approach, class step, to reduce the human effort required in the process. Concretely, class step contains a pipeline for clustering similar test steps together based on their natural language description. The evaluation shows that class step significantly improves the cluster quality and reduces the number of clusters. In other words, the number of test API methods required to be implemented by human testers. We also analyzed the failing causes and discussed future directions. Thank you for listening. And for the details, please read our papers. Any questions or feedback are more than welcome via emails or chat in the conference. Thank you again.